Hello, welcome. This is Top TV and we're right here on one of our current affairs program. And today we want to talk about the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal. And uh, we all know last week the judgment as regards all the petitions that were filed regarding the elections, uh, the 2023 uh, general elections, you know, judgments were delivered last week. And uh, there's been a lot of reactions. And of course, today we want to talk about all those reactions and some of the issues surrounding the judgment. Um, some, some matters that were not really clear. We are going to be discussing that right here on this program. So make sure you join us, drop your comments. And if you haven't subscribed, I don't know what you're waiting for. You're missing a lot. Go ahead and subscribe now so that you don't miss any more. And uh, so that you can be a part of the conversation, so drop your comments. And with me on the program this very beautiful day is a legal practitioner, a private legal practitioner, and also the head of department, Paralegal Studies, Eastern Polytechnic, River State. I'm talking about no other than LG Jamala Esquire. You're welcome. Good afternoon, Abulian. Thank good, you for having me. Good to have you on the program. All right, so he is going to help us dissect some of these issues right here on the program. So without wasting any time, let's get into some of the matters on ground. All right, uh, Mr. Jamala, let's start with uh, the status of the FCT. It has been a lot of concern. It has brought a lot of concern since the judgment was delivered. A lot of people are saying, are they now saying that the FCT is now the 37th state in Nigeria? What's your take on that? I think the status of the FCT has been one of... Uh controversial controversial in the sense that uh, why section 134 of the constitution makes it clear that for you to be declared um, a president you must have um, aside being having the majority of votes mm. you must have won up to 20 up to two third of the states and uh, gotten up to 25 percent of those two third states mm. and the operative word there is and Mm. and the FCT. Yeah. But uh, the conf controversy can be linked to Section 299 of the Constitution, which also states that uh, the FCT uh, should be regarded as one of those states when it re regards with the provisions of the Constitution. So the Constitution is to be interpreted by Section 299. FCT is to be interpreted as if the FCT mm. was a state. Mm. We are all aware by, if you go to the schedule of the constitution where the list of the various states are, we have 36 states mm. and the FCT and, mm. and the FCT. Yeah. So by ordinary literal interpretation of the, uh, of the constitution, the mm. FCT is not regarded as a state. Mm. Now, there are some decisions of court that have, in one way or the other, tried to establish or interpret what uh, to third majority is, and that's mm. the famous case of Aolo, mm. and even Aineka, sorry, Buari against or Basanjo, where the court said, in trying to arrive, the principle of what to third is, mm. all, is all about. Simple mathematics, two third of 36 is 24. Mm. But in Aolo's case, the court arrived at 25. Mm. So for you to say you have gotten 20, uh, scored two third of the 24. Five states out of the six. Mm. So that's in that case, the status of the FCT was not to the extent that if you're unable to secure 25 percent of the lawful vote cast mm. in the FCT, then the whole election should be declared null and void. Mm. Uh, if you look at what the court did, uh, one of the pronouncements they made is that the petitioners argued, albeit fallaciously, that for persons who have secured one, the majority of the lawful vote cast mm. two has gotten up to 29 states of the required 25%. And because the person was unable to make the FCT mm. secure that 25, uh, to third, sorry, one quarter vote of the FCT, and it would be fallacious to declare the entire election a nullity. In other words, given the FCT that supreme uh, status that whatever other state does, if you're unable to yeah. secure it, so for that, the controversy will remain until maybe when the matter goes to the Supreme Court, they will have the privilege of interpreting what Section 134, sub, subsection 5 of the Constitution is all about. Mm. So interesting. So from all you've said, the FCT cannot declare the election null and void. That matter about the 25% of that votes they are supposed to get in the FCT that the uh, Labour Party and the PDP took to court. 
uh, still will not be able to help but, yes. them. Yes, like I said, one of the controversies surrounding this uh, pre election petition is mm. that Bola Ahmed Tinubu, our president, yeah. never secured the mandatory requirement of one quarter of the vote of the FCT. Mm. That is 25% of the total vote cast in the FCT. Yes. And so by interpreting section 134, so many persons felt that the election should be cancelled <laughs> or possibly called a rerun between the two uh, leading parties. Yeah. And but the, the judgment of Wednesday the 6th said the contrary. And for now, that is the law that we are following until uh, the contrary is done at the Supreme Court. Interesting. All right, let's move away from the issue of the FCT. Um, <laughs> my next question is going to, I don't know if you'll be able to answer that, but then let's put, let me put it out to you. A lot of Nigerians have also expressed concerns as regards the judgment that was delivered. They don't seem to agree. They, don't, they are not in agreement with the judgment of uh, the presidential election petitions tribunal saying that it was doctored, it, it, it was a sham. Um, some, in fact, some people went ahead to say without evidence that, ah, people put together this judgment and gave it to the judges to come and deliver, thereby casting a lot of doubt on the integrity of uh, the judges at the Supreme Court. What is your take as regards integrity as to the caliber of judges that were in that tribunal? Abule, you are, you are placing me <laughs> on a very tight corner now, knowing that I'm a legal practitioner and yeah. we are regulated by our own rules. Mm. Uh, a lawyer is not supposed to make some denigrating statements mm. or comments about uh, our revived lordships. Yeah, but I would just like you to make Nigerians understand, uh, you know, certain things like, you know, the fact that, despite the fact that they have their reservations as to the judgment, you know, um, one would say that sentiments and emotions will not actually change what the evidences that were given to them in court and the judgments that they have put out. It will not change anything. So just advise Nigerians generally as well. My, how to my simple advice is, uh, is this. First, mm. for you to get a true grasp of, a, of what you do not know, mm. because uh, what relates to law can only be known or appreciated by those who have gone to school, mm. study law and called to bar, and are indeed practicing mm. that you are called to bar is not an elastic that you know all the laws. Yeah. Uh, I think Lord Denning said, God forbid that uh, the lawyer should know everything, mm -hmm. but a good lawyer will know where to find the law. Mm. Uh, so for the principles of law embedded in the judgment, mm. I think lawyers will better appreciate it, but we have for some time, practice what they call social media court <laughs> Exactly. So um, those who are laced with uh, biases by virtue of becoming a political a member to a political party will somewhat interpret a particular provision to reflect their intentions. Mm. So for us, for us to get it right, I, I will appeal to Nigerians first. Mm. Maybe my comment will not, also not fall right to those whose minds are already biased. Mm. It's, for, it's for us to disabuse our mind of the uh, prejudice we have already, those things that we feel, if you have made a point, if mm. you are believe, if you are convict, if you have a conviction of your opinion, then mm. there is no need asking for an extra opinion. Yeah. So if our minds are open, mm. and then you, you listen to A and listen to B, then just oppose with what you have in your mind, you may have the opportunity of shifting ground. Mm. That having been said, I think uh, for you to approach every court or for you to approach an arbitrator, mm. or for you to approach, let's go to the native setting, mm. for you to approach an elder to look into, let's bring it to family affair, husband mm -hmm. and wife, where you call a third party, you, you should have some level of confidence in the ability of that person to give you an unbiased judgment. Sure. Uh, so whatever the person comes out, you should go home satisfied that, yes, maybe I am wrong mm. or the other party is wrong. Sure. Now, for those who have approached the court, they have the confidence. Obi has given um, what they call the press release. Mm. Uh, Atiku addressed the press internationally on Friday. Yes. Uh, they have all retreated their confidence in the judiciary. And so we, we the followers, we should also have that confidence mm. in the judiciary unless you have what they call cogent, verifiable evidence to say that the the, the integrity of my uh, revised justices have been impugned mm. by way of maybe financial inducement. Hmm. Or if you don't have anything, it will be wrong for you to speculate. Yeah. It will be wrong for you to act on assumptions that are basically 
uh, primordial and uh, least with bias. Yeah, I love the way you put it. I hope I hope we're learning because that has always been my position that if you don't have evidences, concrete one at that, to prove the judgment as wrong, then you should hold your peace and await. You know the move by your leader that as a, most of the both of them have decided to go to uh, the appeal court so for the Supreme Court to further push this matter. So please hold on for the courts to handle the matter. All right, we're going to take a very quick break. Once we come back, we're going to take on other matters as regards this issue. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Hey there, are you looking to record your videos, do your voiceovers, and take your professional pictures? Look no further with our state-of-the-art newsroom, photography, kitchen for our food content creators and exclusive children's studio, we certainly can deliver the best studio experience. Our carefully designed studio space can bring your diverse creative content ideas to life. We aim to consistently serve value to our customers far and wide. Come, let Tharv Media give life to your dreams. Tharv Media. A slice of infotainment. All right, welcome back from that break, and we want to thank you so much for watching up to this time. We're still talking about the presidential elections petitions tribunal and the judgment that was delivered last week. We were, we were dissecting the matters, trying to analyze some of those uh, judgments that uh, people are confused about. And I'm with uh, uh, LG Jamal Esquire. And Jamal, I beg your pardon, and we've been going over these matters. Okay, all right, Mr. Jamal, let's come back to you. This time, let's talk about the general pleadings of the entire um, case. Uh, a lot of people, we've heard stories of, ah, people that were saying, oh, the PDP and the Labour Party didn't do well in their pleadings, and that's why they lost. What do you think happened? Generally, the beginning of uh, the end, Mm. In every litigation, is known from your pleadings. Mm. A pleading simply means those uh, the claims that you have brought before court mm. and asking the court to look upon it and give you judgment. And that is what pleading is all about. Your story. Yeah. Your story. Um, election petition. There is what they always say. Election petition is in its nature sui generis. Mm. It's a class of its own, different from other civil proceedings and mm. uh, criminal proceedings. So mm. uh, if you look at one of the, the reasons why both P2B mm. and the uh, article lost at the uh, court of first instance, being the court of appeal sitting by way of tribunal, mm. is to the extent that their pleadings were not uh, in the words of the court, but they were poorly done. Mm. Poorly done in, in the essence that um, they made several allegations as to um, some local government, some police units, some states, mm. some words where their votes were not duly allocated to them. Mm. And the court said those were nebulous paragraphs, uh, mm. vague, and they were imprecise mm. because you cannot say in River State that my votes, I scored 286 in uh, a particular police unit mm. without mentioning particulars. Mm. Now, particular simply means go to the root. If you are alleging that in River State you scored 10, mm. and that you are located 12, uh, sorry, 2, mm. now you have to go to the root to say in pulley unit so so and so, mm. in pulley unit so so and so, in so so local government, I was unduly, the, some votes were unduly deducted from me. So mm. those are the particulars you are to give in. I'm not say that in River State I earned 12, but I was given 10. Mm. Now, the court is not what they call. Um, uh, super, the, the court does not imbibe what they call superpowers to to look into the entire state and begin to pick where those votes were were not given to you. So mm. the, the court said the pleadings of the petitioners were poor in the sense that particulars were not made reference to. Now, there is a provision in uh, the first schedule to the Electoral Act 2021, mm. 2022, sorry, mm. where it says where a respondent is complained that the uh, petition is nebulous, is imprecise, is mm. vague, mm. that the petition, the respondent is to ask for what they call further particulars. Mm. Now, the court, in its judgment on Wednesday, held that 
where they where your own pleadings from the first instance is so imprecise that mm. even the respondent cannot even understand what you're saying. Mm. That there is no further need to ask for particulars. Mm. And that provision in yes, in uh, paragraph 18.1 of, of, of the first schedule to the electoral act, is to the extent that yes, I understand paragraph one, two, three, I do not comprehend paragraph four. I understand paragraph six, seven, and eight. Well, paragraph nine seems to be a little bit confusing. Then I can now ask for further particulars. And that mm. the provision for further particulars is not mandatory on the respondent. Mm. So long as the petitioner has failed to indicate those particular provisions. So on that alone, the stock has so many paragraphs of the petitioners. And now those, if you look at those paragraphs, election petitions like a pyramid, it starts from somewhere. Now, if the foundation is destroyed, the Bible says, what can the righteous do? Yeah. And now, in this essence, we're not even righteous. So if our foundation is destroyed, what are we, the ordinary men, mm -hmm. ought to do? Mm -hmm. So they struck out those paragraphs that brought in another angle that there are 10 witnesses who are discountenanced. Mm -hmm. And the discountenancing of those 10 witnesses led to the court rejecting about 18,000 results hmm. that the court ordinarily ought to look fall on to consider whether or not those votes were actually, uh, those 18,000 polling units, the vote accruing therefore mm. were actually that of the petitioner. Yeah. So the beginning, like I said, the end of every proceedings is considered from the beginning. Yeah. In other words, what do you have? What are you bringing before the court? Have you placed before the court cogent, verifiable evidence, or mm. by a way of, is your storytelling? Mm. So if you are not consistent in your story, I do, you do not expect me to understand your story. I give you an explanation from what you have said. So pleadings is the bedrock. In evidence, mm. at year four, is the 400 level in some cases. Mm. He said, welcome to law. The deciding factor of every case is evidence, mm. and that is the pleadings. Wow. Interesting. You mentioned uh, 10 witnesses that were you know, disallowed from giving their uh, witness uh, story at the tribunal. And, you know, it was based on grounds of uh, subpoena. I'd like you to expand on that uh, story. Now, if you go to paragraph uh, four of uh, the Electoral Act, of the first schedule to the Electoral Act, mm. it says that while filing, filing your petition, a petitioner is required to, to list the number of witnesses you are bringing, Mm. Then also file in what they call the witness deposition. Witness deposition is simply, I am coming to give evidence in court. This is what I will say. The mm. essence is to front load. Front load means is to serve on the adverse party so that the adverse party will also have an understanding of what I am bringing in mm. in order not to be ambushed in court. Now, he mm. said, you have to list your witnesses, documents that you'll be relying on to prove your case, front load, sorry, uh, witness depositions of your intended witnesses. Now, for if you look at that paragraph four, sub one, mm. for the petitioner, the law requires you to list mm. the documents you'll be relying on and the, uh, what do you call them, the witnesses you're also to rely on. Mm. It is not mandatory in the circumstances that some of the witnesses, like, INEC is a party in the petition. Mm. And some of the petitions, uh, the paragraphs, the allegations are made against INEC as an institution, INEC and its officers. Mm -hmm. So as a petitioner, INEC is always defending their conduct. Mm. And therefore, I will not, they will not come to me to give me their statement vol voluntarily. Mm. Now, subpoena simply means I have a witness I want to bring to the court. The witness is unwilling mm. to cooperate with me. Court, please give me an order mandating the person to, to come, come and to give court. evidence. Mm. So if you look at it generally, subpoena is, an, is a witness. Mm. A witness who comes by subpoena or a subpoena of the court mm. is a witness of court. Okay. At the time of filing these proceedings, this person refused to come and give me the statement that I require. Mm. Remember, election petition in itself is to be filed within 21 days from the date the declaration of result is made. Yeah. And so if you refuse to file, if you fail or neglect to file within those 21 days, the case is dead on arrival. Mm. And now, from what the court did, which I, with all due respect to my noble lord, which I disagree, is that they gave an order of subpoena bringing in these witnesses. 
the witnesses testified. Mm -hmm. The courts have turned around again to say that those witnesses were, the witness depositions were filed mm -hmm. outside the mandatory 21 days. Mm -hmm. Now, let's state here that the laws regulating election petitions in Nigeria, the drafters of both the Constitution and the Electoral Act, and even the guidelines of INEC were never friendly, and never had the petitioners uh, mm. at the back of their mind when they were making these things. Because proving of election petition in Nigeria is as Herculean mm. as uh, having a lion, or sorry, an elephant pass through the eye <laughs> of a needle. needle. <laughs> because for every slight mistake that you made, is a ground for your petition to be struck out. Mm. Going back to what Supina is, the court said, since Mr. A was unwilling to come and testify, mm -hmm. and for us to come to a clear determination of this matter, he has a role, he has a duty. Mm -hmm. he, has, he must be called to come and testify. And they asked him to come, and he came, and he has testified. You are now saying that because it was not filed, his witness deposition was not filed alongside the petition, which was mm -hmm. filed within 21 days. Mm -hmm. The witness depositions were filed outside the 21 mandatory days. Mm -hmm. And those depositions were against the intent and spirit of paragraph 4, sub 1 of the first schedule of the Electoral Act 2022. Mm. To me, to me, that is not justice. Mm. To, Just, me, to me, it's mm. against, and there are so many decisions of the Court of Appeal mm. that has to do with subpoena. And I was, I, I, I was a little bit perplexed when the court turned around to give a different, di different interpretation. And that alone mm. signaled the fall mm. of the two petitions. Mm. I was going to do a follow-up question as regards these witnesses. So we had 13 of them presented by the Labour Party. Yes. And three of them, you know, were, they were somehow allowed to go because ahead. Because their witness depositions were filed alongside the petition within the 21 mandatory requ uh, required days to file a petition. As against the 10. As against the 10, who were only fired after the court has given this, the order, subpoenaing those witnesses to come and give evidence. And But they came to court. They came, yes. But then their, 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 their own statements were, you know, struck out at the end of the day. Their own statements were struck out of the proceedings because, according to the wisdom of the court, their mm. depositions were fired outside the mandatory 21 days. Wow, interesting revelation there. All right, let's move away from these witnesses. Now, let's go into... Um, the, the, the matter of uh, the president or the, one of the, the candidate of the APC, that's Bola Ahmed Tinubu, as regards his criminal involvement in uh, the United States of America. That was also part of the uh, matter that the Labour Party and the PDP brought to the tribunal. And uh, that too was struck out. What is your position as regards, you know, that matter being, you know, struck out? Now, Section 134 of the Constitution, of the Constitution, yes, states grants for disqualifying a candidate. Mm. Uh, grants uh, that if you are a, once convicted mm. of a criminal uh, offense, yeah. that has to do, uh, or a matter that has to do with uh, dishonesty. Mm. If you're a lunatic, uh, you cannot, if you are not attained the age, I think for president is 40 years. Mm. If you're not attained, those are disqualifying grounds for... Now, one of the uh, social media trial <laughs> that uh, reigned, uh, it, was, it was everywhere, is yeah. that Tinubu had uh, some convictions in the U.S. relating to uh, forfeiture of some millions of dollars in the U.S. Mm. Now, Section 134 of the Constitution talks about a conviction. Now, what is a conviction? A conviction simply... Uh, means there should be a trial. Mm -hmm. The person was taken to court. A trial, criminal trial. Mm. Remember, in civil law, in civil proceedings, there is no conviction. Mm. Now, in civil proceedings, while if if you are, are lucky to have a judgment, you will be given what they call uh, some declaratory reliefs if you seek them, or if you are looking by way of compensation. They ask for damages. Mm. Now, in criminal law, conviction is the sentence. When you are sentenced, you are convicted, mm. or you are fined, or mm. you've been sent to prison, whichever way the court look at it, or both. Yeah. Now, so the Constitution looked at conviction. In criminal matters, there is no conviction in civil, like I said. Mm. So for you to be convicted first, you ought to have been arraigned before a court, plea taken, 
evidence heard, and a judgment given, mm. not in your favor. Mm. And you are sentenced to maybe a term of imprisonment or a fine. And that fine you actually paid or you appealed and maybe the appeal also find merit in the, in the court of first instance. Mm. So, or you have served out your jail term. Mm. Now, there is also, if you look at subsection four, it talks about where the proceedings or this conviction has lasted for 10 years. 10 years, then that conviction will no longer stand against you. But eventually you want to come out for the political office. Mm. But in the case of Tinubu, he was said to have been involved in some drug, whatever, that has to do with uh, um, the states, the states in America asking a particular money in a particular account. Mm. Because they were unable to give, um, explain the, how that money was raised, how mm. it got to that particular account. Mm. They entered what they call a forfeiture under civil proceedings. So there was no criminal... Mm. There was no criminal element as to that forfeiture. Mm. Ordinarily in Nigeria, before you enter a plea bargain, there's what they call administrative plea bargain and court plea bargain. If you are arrested by the police for being in possession of maybe $10,000, and you say, okay, sorry, I really don't know how <laughs> this $10,000 got into the boot of my car. Mm. Please take it mm. and uh, let me go. And the police agrees with you I said, okay, since you have explained to us, you can go. It's different from no, you must explain to the court how this $10,000 got into the boot of your car. Sure. Now you'll be arranged in court. A charge will be filed, filed against you. You'll be arranged. And the court will say there are some offenses that are in their nature, what they call, once you are seen with a particular, like a possession of an Indian hand, mm. guns, right? Once you are seen with it, mm. it needs no further explanation. It is you left to prove your innocence. <laughs> you are guilty as sin. Yeah. Now, it is left for the court to indict you, or even if you are entering a plea bargain, it will be by the record of the court that you enter the plea bargain. Mm. A plea bargain simply means an admittance to an offense in lieu of a lesser punishment. So you'll be convicted. But in the case of Tinubu, it was a civil forfeiture, and, there were, and therefore there was no conviction. Hmm. But our constitution talks about a criminal conviction. So the court, I agreed with uh, the petition tribunal, but because there was no con conviction as envisaged by the constitution, hmm. it therefore cannot stand as a disqualifying factor. So I agreed in total with them, and uh, I think... It was more of a primary law, but the, we overblew it in the social media and uh, gained public acceptance, mm. waiting for something that was never existing. <laughs> but, that, but then a lot, of, a lot of Nigerians will begin to wonder, then why would the Labour Party and the PDP, you know, file that as part of their case against Tinubu, knowing fully well that if it's, it's a civil matter, it's not going to go anywhere? You know, you know what lawyers do sometimes is to test the ground. <laughs> okay. uh, because Whether it is, to work for them. Yes, because <laughs> it's not something that happened within the jurisdiction of Nigeria here. They wanted to meet, to interpret the forfeiture over there at the court of uh, at, at the U.S. Mm. to mean applicable in Nigerian law to mean uh, a conviction. Mm. I was of the view that before you have a, for, a forfeiture, you must have admitted to the commission of that crime mm. prior to this judgment. Mm. I was holding the view that for you to have forfeited something, it must be an admittance of guilt of the commission of that particular thing. But sometimes it doesn't happen that way. Okay, our, so our constitution uh, talks about a conviction. Mm. And I've already explained what a conviction yeah. is all about. Yeah. The process is to being convicted. Mm. You must be arraigned, evidence given. Maybe you even plead guilt in the court. Mm. Then you are convicted summarily. Oh, interesting. So, uh, so, so I guess that's what they did. Those lawyers that filed that as part of they their were case. just testing the grounds. They, they, they are senior men who are exposed uh, very much, very well experienced mm. in election petitions. But sometimes there are certain things um, you bring to test the ground. Mm. If it had gone in their own way, it would have been a precedent in that uh, forfeiture. Sure. Also, in Nigeria, can be interpreted to mean 
a criminal conviction. All right, very interesting uh, revelations uh, from Mr. Jamala here, LG Jamala Esquire. And, uh, you know, the marches that are coming out uh, from uh, the presidential election petition stripe, you know, are enormous and very, very interesting. That needs a lot of explanation. I've been learning quite a lot from these conversations, and I'm sure you have been too. So we're going to close this episode right now, but don't... Uh, this is not the end of it. We're still going to come back with another episode where we'll conclude on most of the matches on ground. So make sure you wait for our next episode. So subscribe and of course, turn on your notifications so you get notified once we upload it. Be the first to watch and also drop your comments and your reactions on the comment section. Until next time I see you, my name is William Sabuli. See you next time. <laughs>